Hello friends, my name is Theo and today this exciting mixed new media tutorial is made possible by Skillshare. More about them at the end of the video. So today we're going to talk about the camera raw format and even though that seems like a simple thing to talk about, there's really a lot of interesting intricacies in here that we can explore. So the TLDR for those of you who want it is that the camera raw format is the actual photo site data from the camera not translated into video. It's either compressed or uncompressed and it normally has some sort of a metadata sidecar along with it to store things like your camera settings, etc. And now for those of you troopers who really want to stick around for the actual nitty gritty of the tutorial, we need to first talk about how cameras turn light into pictures on your screen. So first, light bounces off the subject, then goes through the camera's lens, gets focused down, and then hits the sensor. The sensor is what translates this analog light data into digital ones and zeros, and it's where a lot of the interesting parts of RAW come from. So a sensor is made up of a bunch of tiny little things called photosites, which are basically like tiny little solar panels that give you the level of light hitting them. So if it's a dark part, like for example on my shirt, that'd be represented by a very low value in the photosite output. Or if it's a bright part, then that'll be a high value. So, interesting side note, when we talk about the dynamic range of a camera, that is actually how many values fit in between that lowest point that a photosite can read before it turns into noise in the low end, and the highest point before it turns into white. So if a photosite can encompass a large range of things in there, that's called a lot of dynamic range, and if it goes from zero to clipping really fast, that's a low dynamic range. All right, so we know each little photosite can give us the value of that tiny little point in light on the sensor, and then if we create an array of those across the entire sensor, we stitch them all together, that will give us an image. But a photosite can only give you one value, and our typical RGB video gives you three values. So in order to turn one value into three values, we have to do some pretty interesting magic. The first step is to put a color filter over each of the different photosites. So that'll be either red, green, or blue, so that each photosite can only give you the value of that either red, green, or blue light at that particular point on the sensor. And then we arrange those in this pattern called the Bayer pattern, and there's a bunch of different patterns, but most cameras correspond to the same checker pattern of green, blue, red, green in this two-dimensional array. And the reason why we have twice as many green as we do have the other individual colors is because human vision is particularly sensitive to green light. And if we look at a chart showing the sensitivity of our different cone cells, you see that the M and L cells actually have a big overlap in between them in the green area of light. So I couldn't actually find an evolutionary reason for this, but if there's any biologists out there that want to let me know why this is, I'd be very interested, so be sure to leave a comment below. But moving on, we have this mosaic Bayer pattern of our different photosites, but those are still photosites each containing one dimension of data instead of three. So there's this process called debayering, which you may have heard about before. And that is actually using the surrounding photosites and data from them to create each and every individual now pixel of data where you get the red, green, and blue value. So normally when you record digital video, your camera does the debayering process for you and spits out a video format that you can play on your computer nice and easily. But whenever you record in RAW, then your computer has to do that debayering process. That can be really useful because you can change things that would otherwise be baked into the video during the debayering process. So things like your white balance, your tint, your color space, all that good stuff. You can change that when you record in a RAW format. And another interesting thing is that whenever you shoot in RAW, your footage can actually look better over time as the debayering algorithms get better. Because once again, you're sort of making up data basically by pulling the data from the surrounding pixels. So as those algorithms get more advanced, your footage can actually look a little bit better. Now, just because you're shooting in RAW doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting the highest quality image possible because there are versions of compressed RAW that can keep throwing away more and more data. So I've personally had many projects come through the door that shot on a RED camera with something like 20 to one compression or something crazy. And that is not lossless compression, it's throwing data out. If you read the patents, there's actually a lot of interesting things going on with that. So just because you're shooting raw doesn't mean you're getting the highest quality possible, but it does mean that you're getting the most flexibility possible. So when you're shooting raw, be sure to understand why you're shooting it. If you're shooting like 20 to one on a RED camera, maybe that's because you're shooting like a documentary and you're going fast and you don't have time to change camera settings. Or maybe you're shooting something where you have a lot of time and you know that you got your camera settings right. So you can shoot something like, uh, 444 footage where the debayering will be done in camera so you have a simpler post-production workflow but you're still getting a very high quality image. Now for the particularly keen viewer among you, you might notice that a little more work went into this video than my normal tutorial like research and like doing any actual work at all and that's thanks to our sponsor Skillshare. Now if you're not already familiar with Skillshare it's an online learning community with just thousands and thousands of courses where you can learn all sorts of different things from this normal like video production stuff like we're probably interested in but also things like creative writing, drawing, lifestyle stuff. There's just a whole slew of different things. I right now personally am going through the learn to draw colon daily practice to improve your drawing skills class by Gabrielle Bricky, which is really great. I've always been super self-conscious about how bad I am at drawing and every time I try to start up, it just doesn't work. I keep a sketch pad by my computer so I can practice, I just never do. But this class has really helped out with just sort of 
buckling down and focusing to it. And one of the great things about Skillshare is just how focused it is, because you obviously know that there is educational content available on YouTube, but what Skillshare really provides is having it all focused and in place. There's no ads, there's no weird algorithm stuff. No one's, there's not really any clickbait to it. The titles of the video are actually the titles of what you're gonna learn. And the videos are arranged in series, so there's a playlist of stuff. So like, if you're like me, you just always skip the introduction because you never need to see it. And it's got it right there. Everything is laid out so nice. So I know that you like learning stuff because you're watching these videos. You watched till this point of this, you know, admittedly pretty dry video. So you should go check out Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to check out my link get a free two months of premium access. That's 60 days, that's crazy. You can learn so much stuff in 60 days. I would recommend you doing that. And not only recommend you doing that, but see if you can actually stick to a schedule during those 60 days. Having that sort of set in stone time frame, I think will really help out a lot. You can either decide to cancel your subscription with no questions asked, or you can continue it for less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. And the way they have it laid out, you'll find yourself really having an easy time discovering a lot more stuff that you wanted to learn because it's just all education stuff. It's so easy to browse. Uh, everything's laid out so nicely. I just can't, I can't get over enough, especially with how much of a mess some of the internet is right now. Just having something that's focused and nice and easy and simple, super affordable, would super recommend. So once again, I just really appreciate Skillshare for allowing me to do this little more interesting in-depth tutorial. Check them out. Once again, I'm with you with Mr. Media. Have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.